you ready to get sparked up? I certainly hope so. <laughs> hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode number 562 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. This week, my guest is Adam Urban, Director of Engineering at Spark Charge. Adam and I are talking about how Spark Charge is changing the EV charging landscape. We dig into the details of their Rody Mobile DC Fast Charger, what their Spark Charge Out of Charge program is all about, and where Adam sees EV charging headed in the future. Also, a little later on, I investigate how the feathers of the eastern bluebird could usher in advancements in battery technology. But first, please welcome Adam Urban to Fish Fry. Hi, Adam. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Good to meet you. So for my audience who may not know, what is Spark Charge all about? Yeah, so Spark Charge created the world's first mobile DC fast charging system and network, really. So we offer charging as a service and provide EV owners with the freedom to essentially immediately deploy DC fast charging without the need for a grid connection or existing infrastructure. And we've got patented hardware that we put into the mix that allows us to enable offering that service. And we sell those chargers to customers as well as operate them ourselves to deliver charging as a service to commercial customers. I love it. Now, I'd like to explore all of your solutions. So let's start with Rody Portable. Tell my audience what this solution is all about and what's under the hood. Sure. So the Rody Portable is a, a patented, modular, stackable DC fast charging solution that can deliver up to 20 kilowatts of power to an electric vehicle. So that's about a mile a minute of charging. It's pretty powerful for the, the compact form factor. Each battery module is about 3.45 kilowatts of usable energy, and you can stack them up to four high. So a full four stack will give you 13.8 kilowatt hours total. Um, that's enough for around 60 miles of extra range, depending on the vehicle that you're charging. And it's pretty popular. It, it gets used by roadside assistance providers, by automotive OEMs, municipalities, fleet operators. Uh, and we also use it internally to offer charging as a service in some markets as well. But it's pretty cool technology. It's an in-house design, and it's sort of the most compact DC fast charger on the market. Cool. Now, I was also really interested in your Spark Charge Fleet EV charging. So what challenges is this type of technology looking to solve? And this service also uses that Rody V3 technology, right? Yeah, it does. One of the, the biggest challenges that fleet operators are looking to solve as they're trying to electrify their fleets uh, is a high cost and long timeline required to install sort of fixed charging infrastructure. You think about things like transformers, uh, electric utility wiring. So a typical project can take two to five years, can cost millions of dollars, take a lot of time and take a lot of planning to execute. But with Spark Charge and Spark Charge Fleet, we essentially enable fleet operators to enter new markets very, very quickly with electric vehicles in as little as two weeks. So we provide completely turnkey charging as a service. You tell us where you need the energy, how many cars you need to charge, and we take care of the rest. It's pretty powerful. Let's also talk about Spark Charge Out of Charge, or OOC. Now, this is your commercial service, right? What kind of range are we talking about? Yeah, so Out of Charge is a mobile EV charging delivery service that delivers smaller amounts of energy compared to, let's say, Spark Charge Fleet. So up to about 50 miles of range per charging sessions. And for that, you know, our customers use the Spark Charge mobile app. They tell us where they need to be charged. It will come out and actually deliver that. But that's for, you know, customers that maybe need a little extra boost versus with Spark Charge Fleet, we do use that Rody V3 hardware and that really stores something like five times the energy of the Rody Portable charges at more than six times the speed. So for Rody Fleet, each battery contains 70 kilowatt hours of energy and can charge a vehicle faster than 120 kilowatts. So it gets most vehicles up to 80% in less than 30 minutes versus out of charge is really for the smaller amounts of energy, the, the sort of quick boost type solution. So what kind of industries would your solutions be a good fit for? 
Yeah, really every industry. We have major customers in nearly every sector today. Some of our biggest customers are rideshare operators, car rental companies, online shopping providers, automotive manufacturers, dealerships, public service operators, shipping, logistics companies, utilities, you kind of name it. We we sort of play the field when it comes to, to sectors and industries. Our solutions fit for all of them, right? Anyone that needs a vehicle in their operations or that might be looking to electrify can really take advantage of our products and services. So what do you see are the biggest challenges in the realm of EV charging moving forward? Yeah, there's a few. I think the biggest is probably the lack of consistent available charging infrastructure. And it, it is difficult, especially in, in some markets compared to others. And it's one of the, the challenges that we really help solve. You know, some parts of the country are devoid of many EV chargers, especially EV fast chargers that make things like road trips or long distance travel and shipping and trucking very difficult. And so that's something that, you know, as a country, we need to solve and get better at, especially as a country as large as the United States, about putting that infrastructure into place. The other thing is connector standardization, and it's something that's been happening over the last few months, and it's exciting to see. We sort of had a lot of competing standards out there, if you will, right? We've got CCS, we've got Chatamo, we've got the Tesla NACS connector, and seeing the EV market sort of coalesce around the NACS connector is really exciting and will help hopefully lead to wider available charging and more vehicles able to charge at more stations successfully compared to the situation today, which can be fragmented and unreliable. And speaking of unreliable, equipment maintenance is the other big challenge we see in the EV charging space. Even if you know, you've know you got a brand new DC fast charger put into a location, if it's not maintained, then after just a short period of time, it will be difficult for consumers and people needing to charge to rely on it as cables break down, as chargers break down. We've seen time and time again that those networks and those devices really do need to be serviced. And it's one of the other things that Spark Charge does great. We, we maintain the fleet. We take care of all of that for you and make sure that every piece of hardware that we put onto the market works and it works reliably to charge your vehicles. That's fantastic. All right, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. So, if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? Oh my gosh, that is a really good question. The first thing that popped into my head, I was on a business trip to Asia several years ago and visited uh, Sai Kung, a fishing village in Hong Kong, and they had the most amazing shrimp dish. I can't even really describe it, but I, I have dreams about it sometimes. <laughs> and I think, yeah, if I had to like have one thing, if I could have anything, that would probably be it. Uh, but yeah, that's a great question. That sounds good. Well, Adam, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. You're very welcome. It was great to meet you, Amelia. Could the feathers of the eastern bluebird help usher in advancements in battery technology? Sounds kind of crazy, right? But it's exactly the basis of a new study developed at ETH Zurich. Using the unique structure of the eastern bluebird's wings as inspiration, they have created a scalable, robust, and easy-to-produce novel synthetic material that could be used in batteries and water filters. If you have seen one of these eastern bluebirds, they are strikingly blue, an absolutely beautiful bird. And their color stems from the unique structure of their wings. You see, the feathers of their wings are made up of a network of channels that have a diameter of only a few hundred nanometers. This team considered that maybe this kind of network structure could lend itself to a usable material. And they were right. Okay, so this is how they did it. They started with a transparent silicone rubber, which was first placed in an oily solution, and then left in a 140 degree Fahrenheit oven for a couple days. This caused the material to swell. After that, it was cooled and extracted from that oily solution. 
When they analyzed the material under a microscope, they found that it indeed looked like the structure of those bluebird feathers. But there was one important difference, the thickness of the channels that were formed. While the bird's feathers channels were around 200 nanometers thick, this new material was around 800 nanometers thick. A very important part of the formation of this material is called phase separation. You have probably experienced phase separation making salad dressing. Oil and vinegar do mix when they are shaken, but separate when the process is stopped. But another method can be used to mix the two, by heating and then cooling. That same principle was applied by these researchers from ETH Zurich. When they interrupted the process, those channels were created. So what's the connection here between this new bluebird wing inspired material and new battery innovation? Well, this team says that this new material could be used for solid electrolytes for batteries. One of the reasons for battery failure or losing a battery's charge over time is because their ions react with the electrolyte, which causes the electrodes to establish physical contact and damage the battery. This new material would avoid physical contact between the electrodes while also maintaining good ion transport through the battery. Now, this material is far from being ready for prime time. Carla Fernandez Rico, the study's lead author, says this about the future of this research. She says, The product is still a long way from being ready for market. While the rubbery material is cheap and easy to obtain, the oily phase is still quite expensive. A less expensive pair of materials would be required here. They are also looking at sustainability as the future for this technology. Carla points out that the researchers plan to improve the material, focusing on sustainability. Many natural polymers, such as cellulose or chitin, have a structure similar to the rubber being used in our work. So, We'll see how the rubber meets the battery. <laughs> so if you want even more information about this super cool study or more information about Spark Charge, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal account, check out Amelia D 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I completely understand. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash EE Journal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by me. <laughs> And, of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. So, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to this year's podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some super exciting new upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, -E at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of December 15th, 2023, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.